right, so the questions that were asked are down here. How many right-handed and how many left-handed? Have we seen this question before? Yeah. Yes. yes. This was in our first assignment from the textbook with graphing. Okay. But we need to be able to write a system of equations. Okay. You have to put all of that away and just have your notes. So, first off, someone said, does it matter what variables you use? To me, because I'm talking about right and left, I might use R and S, right? Right handed and L for left handed people. And how many people are in our class? 30. Equal 30. First equation. It's standard form. We don't have a point, we don't have a rate of change. Standard form. The next equation goes back to the very first statement. Jacob, in that first statement, what did you call it? Uh, this phrase is is almost always going to be your equal. The phrase of is almost always going to be your multiply. Okay? So when you are looking at something like this, and it says the right-handed people in class is, keyword, that's your equal. Right hand equals nine times the number of left hand. Of, keyword, so I'm going to have nine L. Now this was one that before in our homework when we started this unit was in a graphing one. To me, this doesn't make sense to graph. It's set up perfectly for which one? Substitution or elimination? Substitution. Substitution. Now, someone said to me, Mrs. Thompson, I don't like using R and L. I like to say X, and X is going to be my right-handed people, and Y is going to be my left-handed. If you do not use the variables that match, like the word that you're trying to find, you need to tell me what the variable is. And then you could still have X plus Y, right, equals 30, and X equals... 9y, and you'd still solve that system. But if you use x and y, and x and y have nothing to do with right and left, then you, you have to describe the variable, okay? So, Lucas, let's do it. Tell me what to write. Uh, in the first equation, you said you're going to substitute, right? So, 9l plus l equals 30. Yep. You got 10l equals 30. And the number of left-handed people in our class is, is the so on both sides like that. Left equals two. So we're going to answer the question. How many left-handed people in class? Three. Zach, how do we find how many right-handed people? Which equation would you use? Uh, we'll use the bottom one. Okay. And what would you get? Twenty-seven. Would it matter which equation you use? So. 9 times 3, and if we went back to this one, does it check 27 plus 3, does that equal 30? It checks, right? So if we are looking at that, we can see that it checked. Always using the one you didn't solve it to do your check. A lot of you didn't do a check on your quiz that we took last week on Tuesday. So making sure you're doing that. So as you read this equation, Natalie, would you read, please? A point measure is going, is going to demonstrate that it's three feet tall and broken. Another trait of the nursery is four feet tall and both at an average rate of half a foot per year. So the question we are asked is after how many years would the trees be the same height? So we are talking about their heights, right? So maybe you want to say y equals heights because this equation you decide you want to go with x and y. And then so y is the height and x is going to be my years. Okay? So, for the height of tree 1, I'm going to call it y sub 1. This is almost like that worksheet you had on 4C today, where it gave you the two people, and it said they're both going to charge. It's like number 2 on that, right? Okay. So, Maria, how could I write that equation for the first tree? Do I want to use standard form, slope, intercept, point, slope? The first tree is height. It starts what? Slope intercept. Because where does it start at? What's its starting point? Three feet, right? This is our y-intercept. This three feet tall, that's a y-intercept. And what is the rate? Right here, you even got the word rate with it, right? That's what slope is. It's our rate of change. So our rate of change is 
This is my slope in that equation. So Maria, what would the equation look like? Y equal? Do you want to go? Yep, I could go x plus 3. I could go 3 plus x, right? I'd take it either way, okay? Emily, second, second tree, right? What do you know about the second tree? Four feet tall. Point to that, right? So how can I write that as an equation? Point five plus four. Plus four. Now I had some people say that they would definitely use elimination with this one. Right here, right here. Get this in the right there you go. So to me, when I look at this, it's much easier to do substitution. Because I'm trying to find when the heights are the same, right? I want to know how many years. So I'm going to put the height 1 has to be equal to tree 1, has to be equal to tree 2. Again, this is almost exactly like question 2, part B, that you did on today's that 4C worksheet, okay? So you're going to put, what was the height of tree 1? Oh, it was x plus 3. What was the height of tree 2? It was 0.5x plus 4. Make sure you have the x's. And remember, if it helps you to put in that 1x, okay? So if I'm solving this, Emma, what are you going to do next? We want to get all the variables on one side. Subtract that 0.5x from both sides. So we're going to subtract 0.5x on both sides. Nick, when I do that, what do I end up with? 1 minus 0.5. 4.5 plus 3 equals 4. So tell me, what am I writing? 0.5 what? 0.5x. Yep. Plus 3 equals 4, right? Is 0.5x going to equal 7 or 1? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Can you see the mistake people do and get 7? Because I have people do that in this class. I have people going, oh, 3 plus 4 is 7. Remember, you're doing inverse operations, so those of you that like to just do everything in your head, you are getting 0.5x equals 1. And here's where I had some people getting stuck. They said, oh, so I'm going to divide both sides by 0.5. 1 divided by 0.5, right, is the same as 1 divided by the fraction a half. Which, when you divide the fractions, is the same as 1 times what? 2. Times 2 over 1, right? Ooh. This answer is 2. I had a bunch of people telling me it was a half. Okay? So... If you get stuck, and mostly you probably use your calculator, but if you didn't have your calculator, 1 divided by 0.5 means this, and then you'd rewrite it as 1 times 2, okay? So, in how many years will the trees be the same height? Mm -hmm. Two years. Now, we did not find out their heights, so I want to do the check. Mason, how would I check this to make sure I did it right? Replace 2 with x, right? So I'm going to go here. 2 plus 3 had to equal, we don't know, right? Right? What our y is? Yeah. So we just have y. So that gives us 5. Mm -hmm. And then I'd replace in this one also. And I put 0. 0.5 times 2. So half of 2 is yeah. 1 plus 4. Does it give us the same answer? Yeah. yeah, they both give us 5. So it checks, it works. You didn't have to check if you could have stopped at this point. And when you check your answers in the back of the work, book, you're going to see that it'll just give the answers, maybe not the equations, okay? So if we start reading on that next one, uh, Anna, would you read that next one, please? I will also say next time remember to pay a one times one dollar membership fee and make three for every aerobics class that they attend. Now remember to pay five dollars for every aerobics class that they attend. All right, keep reading where it says the question down further. For what number of aerobics classes will it cost? So we might want to say, okay, my y is going to equal the cost, and my x is going to equal my aerobics classes. Please write that down with this with me. I would like you right now to write your equations. Would you think these equations are going to be in slope-intercept, point-slope, or standard form from our information? Anyone have an idea? Would you look at them? Do we know a starting point and a rate of change? Or do we have two points 
Or do we have an equation where we don't have a rate of change? We definitely have rates of change, right? Try your equation right now and talk to your shoulder partner, okay? Okay, Logan, go. Three x plus twenty. Would it be okay if you put twenty plus three x? Yes. Okay. And other equation? Five x. Five x. So later we'll also do some work with inequalities. Okay. So I'll ask you to graph inequalities and find the system with a solution. This one just says when will these be the same? So to me, this one is set up really easy to use. What would you use? Substitution, elimination. We've done all substitutions so far. Should we do elimination? Yeah. Okay. Let's do elimination. If we're doing elimination, that means we got to have this 20 by itself, right? So we would rewrite the first equation as negative 3x plus y equals 20. Do you agree? Second equation is going to be a negative 5x plus y equals what? Nothing. Nothing. So if I was looking at these and I wanted to use elimination, I actually would have used substitution. I think it goes much faster for this one because I would have just put this equals the 3x plus 20 equals 5x and subtracted 3x and been done. I have to do a few more steps this way. That's all right. We're going to take, you want to multiply the first or second equation by negative 1? Second. So everything by negative 1. So I'm going to make this into a, so my new equation is 3x plus y equals 20. I have 5x minus y, and it's still 0, right? Because 0 times negative 1 is still 0. So I get 2x equals 20, and x is equal to 10. Now, to me, it would have been much quicker to use substitution, but either way, as you do, these would be correct. So when will the Robitz classes be the same? For 10 classes. What if I would say, when is it a better buy to be a member? Okay? When is it a better buy to be a member? It's a better buy to be a member when we would have put our two equations, right? The member equation, right? Which is 3x plus 20. We want to know when that's a better buy, meaning it costs less money than if you're a non-member. Right? So when this would be 5x. This is exactly like question 2c. Do you agree, those of you that tried to do 2c? This is exactly like that. If you were going to subtract 2x, you would have ended up with x is greater than 10 for an answer. So if you were a member, it's better for you to go to many aerobics, right? But if you're just going to go in every now and then, and you don't even go 10 times in a month, right? It's going to be better to be a non-member, right? So that's where you have to look at that, right? So when you are looking at these problems. So that's, you will have some later in this unit where you're saying when it's an inequality. All right. So as we read this question, Lauren, please. So when you're thinking of these, one is always going to be like, how many people in the class? How many vehicles? Okay. How many vehicles were we using? How many vehicles? Two. We had buses, right? Plus vans. And we used how many? How many drivers? Six. Six, right? So it's either going to be like zero, it's probably not zero and six, right? Or six, zero. It might be one and five, could be two and four, or four and two, right? So three and three, right? Something like that. So we got to keep that in mind. We can't have half a bus or half a van, right? So the next equation is going to deal with the number of people or the value. It's like I like to think of it. It's a value equation. So the value equation is how many people are on each bus? 51B. Plus how many people are on each van? 110. 10. 10B. Were you testing it? I was. I was looking at the six up front. 
And then how many vehicles total were on those two vehicles together? 140. 142. This one is a perfect one for elimination, right? Yeah. If we want to find out both buses and vans, what's an easy number to multiply by? Yes. Either 10 or 51. Yeah. Just get rid of the B, right? So in this first equation, you're going to multiply everything, please, by negative 10 and start solving. I'm going to ask you to show your work, and we'll go through it together. Right? You've got two buses. It is pretty easy to go to that first equation, right, and know that we have to have four vans. Now, in the other class, they solved using substitution. That would work also, right? How would you check this one? On your calculator really quick, put in 51 times. 2 plus 10 times 4. And if you do that, you should get 142. So that's the quick check. Some of you need to make sure you're doing that. All right. Two more to go. Yeah. And then did you see what tomorrow's notes look like? Oh, no. we get into the no. real world problem. No. No. These are kind of contrived. Sometimes, no. Sam, are you ready? To read? Yeah. All right, go. Go, Sam. The measure of one of the angle is a right triangle is four times the measure of the other two. What are the measurements of the, the, the three angles to make the triangle? So we need to make sure we're going to have three angles. Do we already know one angle? Yep, 90. 90, right? We know one because they tell us it is a right triangle triangle, right? So here is our right triangle, right? So we already know the first answer is 90. Then it says we have two acute angles. You agree that they have to both be acute, right? Yep. This one is x, this one is y. What do we know about the measures of x and y together? They equal 90. Now someone said, well, could we have had this equation, x plus y plus the 90 degree angle equals 180. I would take either one of these two equations for your first equation. Does that make sense why? Yeah. The first one is all three angles in a triangle equals 180. But then we just simplify that because if this is 90, that means these two together, x and y, have to equal 90. So I take either one. You don't want both of them, okay? Second equation. It says one acute angle is, again, keyword, equal four times the measure of the other. Oh. So, start me off. What do you think, uh, Cassandra? Which one do you want to be the bigger one, X or Y? X. X equals how many times bigger? So, four Y. You guys have seen this one, right? We already solved this one in your homework already. This is a perfect substitution, right? Four Y. You're not going to put in this X, right? Yeah. 4y plus y equals 90. Five y equals 90. We're dividing both sides by 5. And we get 18. We have two of our angles. They ask for all three of them. You could go to the first one and take 90 and subtract 18. You could take 4 times 18, right? Either way will work. So we should have our last one being 72. All right. So I'm going to have you read through this one, and I want you to try to do it on your own. Okay? So when you read it, do you have a starting point, or do you have a rate of change? And in this case, we don't. So uh, who has it for us? Nick, you have first one? Okay, how many tickets? What did you write? Um, so just the number of tickets. So F stands for which tickets? Adults or children? Children. Okay? We want to make sure since we're not using C for a variable that you tell me what X stands for. And your Y stands for? Adult. So I'm going to disagree with the equation because the first one is just dealing with the total number of tickets. So X plus Caleb Wood. How many tickets did I sell? How would you write your equation? Mm 
If I have x, you start me out, then what? Plus y, keep going. Equal to 101. This is the only one that gets 101, right? Mason, give me the second equation. The value in the second equation. How much was each children's ticket? Uh, one dollar. So 1x. Keep going. Plus 2.5y. 2.5y. Equal? Very close. This one is uh, almost perfect to use elimination, right? How many adults, how many student tickets? Again, I myself would have probably gone with C and with A just because then when I solve the problem at the end, I am going to know which one I solve for. And I would have multiplied that first equation by a negative one, right? So everything becomes the opposite, and I can add them together. And the C's are going to cancel, and I'm going to have one and a half adults, 1.5 adults, is equal to 63. And I'm almost done solving because now I can divide by 1.5. The equations are not meant to be super hard, but you have to start practicing writing. And some of you, when I would recommend you studying for this test, I would go back to these notes and try doing all of these story problems and try doing every one throughout the whole thing. And you think you got it down and then just cover it up and practice it more and more and more. When did we get the adult tickets? For how many? 42. 42. So now I pretty easily, since I know that the adult had 42 tickets, right? So I can take 101 and subtract 42. That's the easiest equation, right? Because my C plus A had to equal 101. And so when I do that, I end up with 59 students. Okay. Um, this worksheet, I have talked about, question, maybe it was question one, probably it's the one I kept referring to as number two in the notes, I think. You should be able to do this. It should be written in slope intercept form. So if you had questions on number one. Number two, what do you know together how many candy bars they solved? Sold. So when I'm writing a system of equations, one equation is that Melissa plus Trevor had to be equal to 49. You should be able to come up with that second equation if you didn't. Okay. When you do part B of number one, it's not a yes, no answer. You're solving the equation. I am going to be taking this for points because you don't have answers, right? So I am going to be taking a look tomorrow when you hand this in, not today, that you have all these equations. Number three, let's write one of her ages, right? Let's write Sarah's age. Um, so it says, suppose Sarah's age is S years, write a formula for Raj's. What would his age be equal to? What is his age equal to in terms of variables? Purpose. Uh, one half. Uh, Don't go back here. Ross's age is one year less than twice Sarah. You don't know what Sarah's age is, right? She's S. It tells us, use S for Sarah's age. How can we write it? That. How are you going to write it? What's twice Sarah? I know. That's why I'm giving you a hint on this one because I'm not going to do B. But I will give you one more hint on C. Piper. Instead of S2, we're going to put 2S, right? So 2 times Sarah's and minus 1 because it is less than. And I don't know if you guys remember about last year when we talked about introducing phrases, but that less than, always you have to switch the order, okay? So it's less than means you cannot take 1 minus 2s, because you're not, if I say you're one year less than I am, or one year less than your friend, if your friend is 15, you are not 1 minus 15. You're not negative 14, right? You're 15 minus 1, which is 14. So thinking about it that way. This one says all three of their ages sum to 21. So you just get this equation. Here you're going to get an equation for Tony, and here you're going to add Raj's age plus Sarah's age, plus Tony's age, equal 21. 
If I can't see your work on this worksheet, Nick, and you're doing like a yes, no answer, and you don't show me all the steps and all the work, you don't get credit for it. So each one of these, you can think of each one of these parts as kind of being like a two points, okay? Someone said, do we have to try the one on the back? Um, you should try this one on the back. 